I think I'm audible to everyone. Yeah. Um, my name is Jagan, and today I'm going to talk about uh, DRM Bridge API to standardize for writing a DRM drivers. This is a specific talk uh, that is rather than a proposal, uh, something like um, there are DRM drivers in the Linux kernel, so they are well stable since from years. So since these are uh, typical uh, video drivers, uh, there is much enhancement to need to give to propose or something like that because it's it's, it's a enhanced stack that has some fixes and enhancements. But this particular talk will underlying uh, some changes with uh, with respect to the DRM drivers by introducing some uh, some APIs to make them as standard so that even uh, for uh, even you know, the new device drivers drivers who are willing to write on the DRM can might change if you follow something like this, these areas. So that is how this talk about and uh, a little bit about me and I've been associated with the uh, upstream kernels and you put uh, quite a years and even for the DRM from since long uh, three, four years back. So I wrote a couple of drivers on the DSI and even the bridge drivers, something like that. So more or less, I'm an embedded Linux engineer who are particularly working for an upstream kernels and upstream U-boot. So th this particular talk, the talk that I'm right now talking about is can be an enhancement with my previous talks on a couple of uh, ELCs and uh, XDCs. But in this talk, I will more explain about the recent improvements in the bridge along with the DRM drivers and how we want to make the bridge API can be standardized to, to enhance the drivers to be enhanced more. And I will potentially discuss the, what, what are the possible uh, uh, new bridge enhancements drivers can be followed in the future. And also what is the impact of uh, the existing encoder with respect to the, the bridge API need to be standardized, something like that. So, so if we can start with the actual presentation, so I will start with uh, the initial slide. Uh, like uh, everyone knows that uh, uh, the, the DRM bridge, since from uh, we Linux 4.0, it has been uh, entitled in the driver, DRM drivers. I will explain a little bit about in detail for the person to understand. So before Linux 4.4, there is no concept of bridge at all. So all the DRM drivers need to be in line with um, uh, plain CRTC and encoder. And if, within the encoder drivers, we have individual connectors. It could be HDMI or it could be LVDS or any PDSA. So the underlying drivers can be stacked uh, by taking the encoder as an example, by taking the encoder as an input. But things have changed since the display, uh, display, display, display interfaces are increasing a lot. So they, they give more possible for the display vendors rather than the SOC vendors. So they, they add more and more uh, display interface converters and the display interface bridges. So in order to enhance that, they introduce the bridge API. So the bridge API can be linked list, can be an infinite uh, connectors up to the connector. So the encoder should be passed by the bridge. Bridge can be anything up to your uh, hardware topology. So so uh, the each and enc every encode in the bridge topology should be a single encoder. It can be in a multiple enco multiple bridges, but the, it must have some encoder to handle the CRTC packets from the packet from the upstream DRM. That is a simple Linux uh, KMS pipeline with respect to this bridge. So what are the typical bridges so far we have discussed or to, so far we have implemented basically. The bridge can be uh, termed differently like there can be host bridge or there can be the bridge that can be supported by downstream downstream host, but it cannot be a bridge at all. And sometimes there is a bridge uh, that can convert the bridge, one interface to another interface, like DSI to LVDS, DSI to HDMI, EDP to HDMI, something like that. So uh, here the bridge can be a converter. Sometimes the bridge can be, cannot be a conventional uh, converter. It can be a non-conventional display like a projector DMD. So those DSI to DMD like a, for the project input, that is also, uh, we, call, we call it as a 
converter bridge. So, so far we have uh, been into the Linux kernel. These are the typical four different ways of a bridge drivers. So one can be host and another can be host, but it cannot be a fully uh, bridge. And another one is convert and then so on for the topology point of view. So how, how we can um, access those bridges with respect to these intuitions? Everyone knows that bridge has a bridge API, so bridge can be configured and then uh, bridge APIs needs to be hooked so that bridge, the link list will call uh, one bar after another. But what are the improvements with respect to recent Linux? Ideally, the bridge can be attached in the in the link list format. So in the in the queue format. So assuming there is an encoder that can convert a bridge A A2, A2, A1, A2, A3, then all the bridges can be uh, attached in a queue fashion. So the bridge that attached last can get an access to the first, something like that. So this is a bridge at, at, uh, attachment. So there is a possibility that uh, uh, some of these bridge attachments can be uh, deferred. Like uh, some bridge wants to bridge wants to call before the actual bridge is calling, something like that. So so bridge has a different APIs. It can uh, like pre-enable, post disable enable and disable so all these uh, enable and disable and pre-enable calls of the bridge can be categorized based on the bridge attachment so what you can see is like we have some issues in the recent kernels with respect to my pdsi so assuming there is a bridge a1 is calling of the bridge a2 is calling but a3 bridge a1 require a3 to be initialized first this is one of the uh, typical and unhandled case where a1 need to be initialized to A3, but not A2, something like that. So there we have some flags sitting. So the uh, the internal API calls getting changed this due to, due to these calls. So usual scenario in this in this stack, uh, the pre-enable calls should be EDCBA, but uh, since uh, the DSA host drivers has an issue of having the uh, legacy or uh, some uh, low power state, some of the bridge needs to be called prior to the actual bridge. So these are the flag that affected the uh, bridge chain actually. This is one of the uh, recent uh, API change in the, in the bridge level. Something like this, we have a change in the post disable as well. So the post disable bridges are A, B, C, D, E, but uh, with, with respect to the pre-enable pre uh, call chain change, we have a call chain change in the post post disable. So these are the typical improvements in the bridge so far in the last couple of releases. So let's let's get into po actual point why I, we need to make the bridge as a standard API. So there are there are fundamentally two differences basically. So one the bridge. There should be a bridge driver and there should be a bridge supported driver. Assuming there is a host driver, say for example, there is a MIPDSI driver that is coming from the encoder. So the display bridge, sorry, display host bridge driver of DSI can be connected to a normal panel. It can be connected to another bridge. So in this case, uh, the DSI host need to support the bridge, downstream bridge, but it cannot be a bridge driver. Assuming that that is an example, that is what it called as a bridge supported. So fundamentally, there is no issue at all if I support a bridge supported or fully bridge driver, but there is a fundamental driver uh, definition changes here. So if it is a bridge supported driver, assuming there is a bridge supported driver, but uh, those operations can be categorized from the encoder. So it can pump the encoder operation to the downstream bridge. But if it is a full bridge control driver or fully fully bridge, but those encoder drivers can be replaced with the bridge operation, something like that. So this is where the encoder will typically dump. So there, from the point of DSA host, there is no encoder operation required at all. This is what is called um, making a, or making a standardizing the bridge API, something like that. So if, if you see in this case of Exynos DSI, Exynos DSI is a bridge supported driver of host, Exynos host basically. So it can support the downstream bridges that is connected to the Exynos host, but it is it cannot be purely a bridge driver. So if it is cannot be purely a bridge driver, 
it has an operations must go through with the encoder operations it must have an encoder operation say for example there is another another uh, uh, tree in the stack of downstream tc35869 it is a converter driver so that converter driver is a purely a bridge it cannot support it cannot it might not require the encoder operations at all so the upstream of there another stage can support a encoder but it cannot require any encoder operations so the fundamental advantage of making the uh, fully bridge aware like you can add multiple types of bridges underlying to it rather than uh, sustaining with a single encoder operations so this implementation what it makes actually change the uh, the drivers drivers api stack like uh, you can completely remove the encoder operations on the your drm drivers drivers topology of stack so there is no need to have uh, encoder operations so you can fully aware of you can fully use the bridge apis so once you make the driver into the bridge driver and register those encoder operations with your uh, bridge hooks and uh, drop the call chain of bridges if it is a downstream bridge but uh, the encoder becomes an, a dump encoder now because for the user space to access we need to have at least one encoder but the encoder does not have any operation size like before since host driver should be an encoder the encoder should have an operations but in this case once you make the bridge api as a standard once you make the make your host is a fully bridge aware so we don't need to restore any encoder operations at all because it it's not required because you already make the aps to call them as a bridge because in the drm drm core stack we have an uh, uh, underlying support of bypassing the encoders with the bridge op operations actually these are these are implemented basically these are implemented in one of the drivers or existing drivers there are some drivers from the media tech has already been implemented so they we have they have removed uh, uh, encoder operations and make the bridges in api uh, single api and uh, we have i have written some of the drivers with respect to exynos ds and samsung drivers so where we standardize the api like convert the fully master dsi to fully controlled bridge so one fundamental advantage with having this bridge to make the bridge as an encode, uh, standard api like <laughs> there are some legacy calls or conventional calls in the drm bridge drm drivers like uh, component uh, bind and component uh, unbind these are controlled by the component uh, core stack fundamentally the component core stack has some legacy disadvantages with respect to the drm uh, connected bridges so those component bind drivers or component usage even can be removed from the drm drivers this is another fundamental advantage having the fully aware bridge bridge topology drm drivers so it will impact some some uh, as i said it will impact some driver uh, driver uh, driver details like it will impact it will change the drivers assuming there is a host driver if you are using the encoder operations those are fully removed from the uh, from the host and we can replace those with uh, fully aware bridge drivers so there is no point of using the encoder operations at all but we need to initialize encoder for sure because we need to have an access for our user space to have a encoder but that encoder become a dump encoder so that can be <coughs> anywhere need to be have in the in the in, in in the drm stack so the bridge uh, apis can be replaced with uh, sorry the encoder apis which we replace with bridge apis this is conversion theory and there are some areas where uh, uh, explicit bridge chain calls are need to be taken care say for example if if you have a host driver that support only downstream bridge we need to handle the explicit uh, uh, downstream bridge calls those calls can be removed actually because uh, these these things need to taken care by the bridge core itself so the so individual drivers no need to taking care or no need to call the downstream bridge bridge drivers at all since if you are if you if your host is fully aware of the bridge so these are the typical two changes uh, will make make things better for making the standardized bridge api so there are some other advantages making them as a bridge as a single api so the typical advantage which we have uh, implemented in the another driver that is uh, 
another driver become becomes more more easy to focus on the yeah this is another driver they where uh, we completely remove the host and make this bridge as a single driver irrespect of uh, uh, sock uh, soc vendor or soc design it has basically this is an example of that basically so here you can see exynos and uh, nx play xm8 both uses the same samsung uh, tsmi4 earlier uh, uh, exynos has a separate drm uh, drivers where all the drm drivers will be in the queued on the their drm core there is an exynos dsm driver now we have uh, conventionally removed the driver and make the make the common driver between both exynos and dsm dsa sorry i am x item so this is one of the typical advantages where you can have a single bridge driver that can handle both sos's uh, provided to have a fully avoid bridge so they should have some encoder in their uh, own uh, sos drm drivers but they do not require any host dsa driver because there is one drm driver samsung dsm driver that can handle both the socks relatively since since it is a fully bridge driver so the underlying topology of the samsung dsm can be expanded to anything like that so you can you can even expand like a normal link list this is the main uh, advantages that we have been followed and we have used in the dsm uh, to make the standard api <coughs> so uh, this is uh, why we why we need to make the standard api does it make any changes with respect to drm is is simply fundamentally easy because so we can have a single bridge driver that can be possible scenario that i have explained in the samsung dsmi so we can even drop the encoder operations since they are uh, supporting for a long time and there is a possibility is to support a conventional common driver to handle a different type of scores say for example uh, we have a rock chip we have a stm and we have am logic all these are using the same uh, design where uh, dsm core so right now we have individual uh, dsi drivers and to their uh, individual uh, drm driver stack what if we have uh, a common bridge driver in the bridge bridge stack assuming the all these sources can make use of those bridge, because fundamentally the hardware topology is, is is that is what exactly because all these sources are derived from uh, derived from using those design where ip basically so it becomes more easy if you if you make them as a single bridge driver so all the sos drivers no need to handle or no need to maintain their individual drivers at all in their individual platform stacks that is another typical uh, maintenance friendly environment will be created with respect to making the api as a single bridge so there are some potential enhancements uh, in the in the bridge point of view because uh, yes as i said the media tech even uh, some of the drivers i have been followed with some of the alvena drivers as well that is already we are i'm trying to make them as a single uh, bridge api as well to 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 support the underlying uh, downstream bridges and uh, even if you if you make the master uh, the host bridge as a ho host dsm or host host driver to as a fully bridge driver there can be fundamental uses of underlying support of the different uh, bridge like hdmi in and hdmi out because those are uh, those need to be have a proper um, uh, linkly stack to understand the host as well as in the slave so that is another typical advantage with respect to making them as a bridge as a standard api so we have been uh, discussing these things in the in the even in the mailing list if, anyone has to have need to have any more details to make the standards bjp you can even take on those those areas basically so this is a this is overall um, the 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 critical and the main points of this presentation where i can uh, briefly explain all the details but fundamentally the drivers need to be uh, changed to support the bridge bridge as a single api something like that so if i go further on to the potential enhancements what we can do with respect to bridge is like uh, i have i have i have did something like this in the past in the one to two years back but uh, 
look like there are some um, requirements on the mailing list to have some potential requirement on this particular area like uh, bridge switch so if you if, if you see in the fundamental uh, concept of display bridge a bridge can be host bridge or converter bridge it can convert single in single interface display interface to single uh, display output interface that is how the bridge is called like a, a one to one bridge conversion but there are some applications there are some requirements in the display uh, display 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 technology where uh, they want to have a single display input that can uh, max into two diff more than two categories like but each and every time we can access only one uh, output at a time like there is a there is a concept called dsa switch where we can switch between the outputs so one, if you switch hdmi you can get a hdmi if you switch the lvds you can get an lvds so here the bridge becomes switch here just to understand uh, what is switch aega it is not an official name to be called as a bridge switch because upstream latency is not supporting it all but this is a fundamental uh, requirement right now is uh, some of the vendors or some of the stakeholders are re, uh, taking care basically like uh, in the medical and uh, kiosk areas there are some uh, frequent applications in the recent days but this this can be difficult to understand and difficult to implement but because uh, right now the drm bridge supports only linked list it cannot be a tree so uh, you cannot route a bridge to concatenate to two different outputs that is not possible basically so if you go further on to this that i have implemented uh, with the switch with respect to the mainline linux but not upstream to the linux at all if you see in the in the in the in the in the display output you can see in the runtime i can able to switch the displays by using uh, one of the output of the hp um uh, interrupt basically so by by far fundamentally the, the display you can get only one display that is true that is for sure assuming there is one display that is lvds is coming out and the during the uh, linux boot up so i can switch between the displays like by plugging understanding the hdmi cable something like that that is how i can switch the displays at the runtime this is a fundamental uh, use case on the display switch side yes it is for, by far uh, can be a different approach and uh, is a different uh, difficult approach to deal with because uh, since drm drivers are more of a static in nature uh, the upstream maintainers or even the stack does not support the dynamic changes of the display outputs at all because it will affect the user space kms or something like that so, so this is how it, it it might become there is a change in the stack if 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 it support the bridge as a, a switch sorry uh, bridge switch as uh, including as a bridge this this might change uh, the existing kms pipeline so if you see in the bridge uh, yellow yellow noted area where bridge a1 can be diverted to two different outputs a21 and a22 so something like in the conventional and in the theoretical area like piw tvr is one of the switch uh that can convert uh, two outputs one for uh, adv 7533 that is for hdmi bridge and sn65 ds that is lvds bridge those are internally also bridges that will take the ds input and convert the hdmi and it will this will take the ds input and convert the lvds so the the stack uh, the stack remains the same but the, the understanding of the uh, bridge can be routed in uh, two different area that is very difficult to implement with respect to the existing uh, uh, drm stack even some of the use cases they don't need uh, this runtime switch because people who uses the bridge switch they can statically do the things at at, at a static time like if they wanted to switch the bridge they, they switch the bridge and reboot the system and then use it but that is not uh, a feasible option some of the use cases where have been working like uh, so the medical scenario where they can choose the uh, the operation in one display and the reports in the dis different display that is one one kind of a uh, use case basically that is where these switches will come to picture this is this is why 
I have taken it because these are these are not uh, bridges. Bridge switches are not uh, uh, linked list. They are trees. Uh, the existing DRM cannot support the trees, so it can be difficult uh, difficult approach altogether to understand and implement the things. So if I if I if I I hope I have covered all the details about uh, the recent uh, enhancement on the uh, Linux DRM bridge. At least on the the work that I have been done since from the last three to four years, and these are the typical to do list of my projects in the coming months. So I'm trying to see uh, there is any chances of uh, supporting this switch in the upstream, and I can try that. And I have a new bridge project that I can support it. So since the bridge uh, DRM drivers are uh, well enhanced and well supported, there is no fundamental changes in the core so core side as of now. As of now, but uh, there are more drivers need to be added on the DRM drivers rather than the core AI. So ideally, that is the one of the reasons that we have very less talks on this particular uh, stack since the stack has already been established and can thoroughly be used by the various vendors, something like that. Yes, that is how it is done. And uh, I think that is, I have given all the information about what I have done basically. So if you have any questions and let me know and uh, can be available even for the DRM PRC. Questions, comments? Thanks, Jogan. Thank you.